Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrapcraftastic, and a few weeks ago I received a few questions in my messages on Instagram about rings. And initially my response was, I don't know anything about rings. I use rings, but I wasn't concerned with how many pages fit on the ring size. What are the different ring sizes? How do you measure the rings? These are some of the questions that were mentioned in the message. Initially, I was like, well, I really can't help you with that. After a few days, I was still thinking about those questions. So here I am today, prepared to answer what I can of the questions that were asked to me. To begin with, this is the ring mechanism. This is a six ring for pocket size. Then as the planner size increases, it's still six rings, but there is a space in between the six rings. These are, these three are personal size. So their ring mechanism spacing is going to be basically the same. So the first question that I have is how do you measure the rings millimeters slash inches front to back or side to side inside the loop or outside the loop? Based on my research, the consensus is you measure inside the loop. I have seen two different suggestions for measuring the ring. The majority of what I saw said to measure inside the loop from side to side. I did see one place that suggested you measure from the base to the top. But I do know that with the D ring, we're working with O rings, but with a D ring, you would measure the straight part of the ring. But I'm going to go with the majority of the information that I saw and measure from side to side of the ring and measuring inside of the ring. So I don't have a ruler that measures millimeters. I'm using my Tim Holtz ruler, which is inches only. And this measures about 0.75 inches from left to right. That would make this, I think, 19 millimeters. I went ahead and broke down the millimeters to inches. The two most popular ring sizes in the planner community that I'm aware of are 30 millimeter and 25 millimeter. This one is 19. The inches are about 0.748 031, which is about three quarters of an inch. So my guess is that this mechanism is 19 millimeters. And this is a follow facts. Is it follow facts or follow facts? Follow facts pocket size planner. Next up, we have the follow facts original in nude, barely used. I put it on the shelf because I didn't want to mess it up turned out it got messed up on the shelf with this that I don't know how to get rid of this discoloration so yeah that's heartbreaking both of my uh, nudes got destroyed on the shelf so let's measure this one side to side see if I can get a good measurement on this this one I'm gonna guess is 25 millimeter because 0.98 Four two five two is 25 millimeters in inches so and this is almost an inch not quite so I'm going to guess that one is 25 millimeters let's go on to this one this is a Michaels recollections planner um, it's personal size as well as this and this one from uh, MLG and Co. And if you look there, you can see that all personal size planners or six ring binders are not created equally. They're all three different sizes. And I'm sure if I pulled more of what I have off the shelf from different brands, they would all be different sizes. So I think the recollections tends to be the larger of the personal size planners. So let's just check, check these rings. This one measures about the same as the Filofax personal. So I'm going to say it is 25 millimeters. Let's check the one from MLG and Co. Measuring side to side, the fattest part of the ring. And it measures the same. 
So all three of these personal size are 25 millimeter. I'm gonna include another binder for an example. This is an A5 Carpe Diem. It can hold A5 inserts as well as half letter inserts. And this is what it looks like. I'm pretty sure these are 30 millimeter rings. They measure a little smaller than one and a quarter inches. And based on my notes, that would be about 30 millimeters. So that's what's in this Carpe Diem. I have one more size to look at. This is an A6 rings from MLG and Co. I think this is the only A6 that I own as far as a ring planner. Um, let's see, I think these are 30 mil rings as well. Yes, those are 30 mil rings as well. So that just gives an example. You can have different size ring mechanisms as far as the diameter of the rings in different planners, depending on what the brand makes. So hopefully that answers the question on how to measure the ring mechanism. The next question was how much thickness of inserts will 20 millimeter rings hold 25 30. So I didn't mention 20 millimeters. I have on my list 30, 25, 19, 15. And then I went back and added 20 because I've, apparently it is an option. So let's look at this 19 one more time. One more time. Because it could be a 20. I'm going to stick with 19, but it definitely could be a 20. They are so close in size, it's hard to tell. I could probably look back on the file of facts website and see what size that actually is but we're talking one millimeter of difference so the question is basically how many inserts can you get on the different size rings that is a tricky question because it depends on the weight of paper you're using. Are you using dividers? Are you using dashboards? Are you adding other elements, pockets, folders to your planner or to your ring mechanism? It just depends. But based on just basic, maybe copy weight paper, 20 pound paper, based on the information that I found, 30 millimeter ring should be able to hold 200 to 225 sheets. 25 millimeters should be able to hold 150 to 170 sheets. Then the 19, 20 millimeter should be able to hold in the range of 130 pages, maybe 150. I didn't go any smaller than that. So hopefully that answers the question. That's a tricky question. It depends on the weight of the paper that you use on the rings. I will list all this size information in the description box below because I know it's a lot to absorb just with me trying to explain it to you, <laughs> especially since I'm new to learning it myself. The next question was, how do you fix gaps in the rings? That's tricky too. Um, I don't have a planner here that has gaps. Let's move some of these out of the way because we don't need them now. Um, but let's take this MLG and Co. For example, if your rings are gapped where they're not lined up evenly from side to from one side to the other, so they're like missing each other this way, then you can easily open your rings and then you can gently apply a little pressure to move the closure whatever way you need to move it. So if this one needs to come this way, you will pull this one this way and this one this way, and that way they should meet. And you just have to gently do that. If your rings have a gap when they're closed, I saw this demonstrated in a video and I will link to that video in the description box below. They used a piece of wood, I think. I'm going to use my sticky notes and just let's say for example, this is the ring that had the gap in it. You would place your wood sticky note, something with thickness, and this might not be thick enough. That holds the other rings open enough for you to apply a little pressure to squeeze the two pieces that aren't meeting. And you have to be careful with this. And I will err on the side of just doing a little bit at a time, taking out the piece that is holding them open 
and then retrying. Also, don't do like I do. <laughs> Pulling the rings like this to open them is not a good idea. It's best to use these tabs on the ends so that you don't end up with ring mechanisms that don't close and meet properly. But that is how you can try and repair a ring that doesn't close. So you put something in the other rings to hold them open. There we go. Then you apply the pressure to close the ring as much as you can estimate that you need to close it. All right, let's look at sizes again. So when I decided to tackle this topic, I jumped in and ordered rings. So all of these rings were ordered from Amazon. Back when I first started using six ring binders, it was next to impossible to find ring mechanisms. But now you can easily find them on Amazon, on Etsy, on eBay, um, any number of places. These are what I ordered. Let's see. These are 30 millimeter gold rings. So this is what they look like. They come with the hardware. So these are 30 millimeter gold rings. So these are much bigger than the ones I just shared in these personal size planners. If you can see the difference there, definitely bigger. Then next up, let's see what we have here. This is 25 millimeter in gold. Again, here is the difference. 30 millimeter, 25 millimeter. Then let's see what we got here. These are 25 millimeter in rose gold. We don't need to see the different size. We already saw the different size. It's just a different color. Then this is 30 millimeter rose gold. And that's what those look like. Again, I got these from Amazon. I will link to them in the description box below if you're interested. For the final question that we're gonna tackle here, the question was if you add a ring mechanism to a B6 size traveler's notebook, what size inserts would you use? Would it be personal size or personal wide? Think of it like this, B6 inserts are about five by seven. Personal wide is only a quarter inch smaller at four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So you're only talking about a quarter of an inch difference in height and width. So if you account for the ring size, there's no way that you could use a personal wide without having overhang and quite a bit of overhang. Let's experiment and I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna take out these inserts that I just put in here the other day. <laughs> and we are going to convert this B6 Traveler's Notebook. I'm going to take all this out. I'm going to use the 25 millimeter gold ring mechanism. And I'm going to add this to this planner. But before you do this, you want to make sure that your elastic is good and tight. I may have tightened that too much, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I have it nice and tight. Then I'm going to take my ring mechanism. The mechanism has two prongs on either end. Hopefully you can see that. I'm just going to hook the middle two elastics around those and it has it on the bottom and the top. I'm going to hook that on and hook that on. And I'm using the middle two elastics to do that. So once that's hooked on there, then I'm gonna take the other elastic and wrap it completely around the mechanism. So the right one, I just took it and wrapped it all the way around. Hopefully you can see that. Then this one on the left, I'm gonna wrap it all the way around onto the other side. And this excess elastic, I'm gonna try and tuck in because I don't want to really cut it. If you have done this correctly, then you'll have an X on both ends. And now you have a ring mechanism in your B6 Traveler's Notebook without destroying the integrity of the notebook by adding holes or anything like that. 
You just kind of have to play around with the tightness of your string. So now let's look at the insert size. So if I took this divider and this vellum and put them in here. Now, Michael's personal size is a little bigger than the standard size personal. Uh, Michael's items are four inches instead of three and three quarters. So they're a little wider. Um, I think I probably cut my stuff to be, no, nope, let's take this notebook paper as an example. Let's take this out. I'm just gonna take a few pages. Okay, and yes, I'm still pulling the rings. I know, I know, I know. I can't, I can't help it. <laughs> All right. So this is a printable that's available in my shop at scrapcraftastic.com, which will now be available in my Etsy shop at scrapcraftastic. I'm so used to saying scrapcraftastic.com, but I'm moving the shop. So anywho, so that is a, a true uh, personal size insert. The width is about a quarter of an inch less. So this is how it would fit. There's no room for much anything any bigger so personal wide is an inch wider it would it would be hanging out so that wouldn't work it would have to be personal size maybe an a6 but i don't think so i don't know could turn it into an a6 but i think personal works best for this and just looking at mlg and co if you look at the personal size notebook that comes with the rings it is the same width as the b6 travelers notebook so and then if you look at the height they are practically the same i think maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch difference not much difference at all to further show you the difference in the sizes once you put the mechanism in i'm going to this cardstock and show you what a B6 size insert would look like and what a personal wide would look like. Here we go. This is the personal wide, the pink, and the blue is the B6 size. So as you can see, there's a quarter inch difference in, in width and a quarter inch difference in height. Not a big difference. So let's do this right. This insert is the standard size insert for personal rings. It is three and three quarters by six and three quarters. These pieces, the vellum and the tab divider are sized to fit in the Michaels personal size planner, which is a little wider. So it's four inches by six and three quarter inches. Let's pop these in so that you can see why you cannot use a B6 or personal wide in this if you don't want it to hang out. So I put both in, they look fine while it's open, but as soon as you close it, you see what happens? So it hangs out about three quarters of an inch to an inch, depending on the size because uh, not all B6 Traveler's Notebooks are created equal. Depending on the size, you may have a little less overhang. But yeah, for this one, we have quite a bit. That's why that doesn't work. So you would want personal size inserts if you add your ring mechanism to a B6 Traveler's Notebook. So I hope I answered all the questions. <laughs> I did learn quite a bit about rings that I didn't know. I'm still not a ring snob. I mean, it's not that serious to me, but it is nice to know all the details. And I will be moving into a rings soon. Um, I'm going through my planners and deciding what I want to do going forward. I do want to make some changes, so we'll see what happens. But that is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions about rings that I did not answer or any questions about the information that I provided, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy these other videos. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.